If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've had some amazing guests on this channel. And it's been absolutely fantastic over the last 14 or so months uh, exploring lots of things. As you know, I do a monologue where I voice my opinion in the morning and uh, in the afternoon I tend to put out uh, an interview with somebody who's knowledgeable on all sorts of different subjects which help explain perhaps some of the things that's been going on, some of the nasty policies that we've been living through and what we're going to do with it. And some of that has been to do with health, of course. We've looked at different ways that we can take back responsibility for our health rather than relying on the pharmaceutical companies. We've explored the great harm with certain medical interventions that have happened and what we can possibly do about it and whether we should take further medical interventions in our lives. And we've also looked at banking and money creation and, and the debt-based currencies and alternatives to that. We've, um, we've looked at some spirituality things, such as um, astrology recently and uh, the colour. And, of course, whether you can... Um, I did a, an episode once with a lady who was channelling, and it's all been very fascinating. Of course, we've looked at technology and whether that's good for you, the EMFs, the radiation and 5G, and we've got more of that to come. But one of the things that I continually come back to is what is lawful and what is legal. And they do seem to be two different systems. Well, they are two different systems. You've got the God's law, if you like, or natural law, the law of the land, if you like, the, the land that we live in and what is right and proper. And then we've got man's own homemade system, which we call the legal system with its acts and statutes, which some people want to be able to tell us how to live our lives. And these have been written up um, and codified, and you can find in England, for example, at legislation.co.uk, okay, a whole host of rules and regulations and things that we're supposed to uh, adopt by. But at the end of the day, uh, all men and women, of course, are born equal. And no one ought to have the right to put their ideas um, above anybody else. No one is above the law. Only you're allow uh, you can only, I suppose, have somebody tell you what to do if you consent to it. Of course, we've seen people with bigger sticks will beat you if you don't do as they say, but that's not an even playing field. That's slavery, and we've seen how that works. And it seems to me that has been how the legal system has turned. We've seen how common law and case law has been useful in the past in which we can set precedents for certain ways to live. But in recent times, it's completely got out of hand and we've got people in Parliament making rules and regulations which seem to be extremely anti-human. And you'll see that we've got agendas being posted and enacted against us that we have no control. We've seen that these policies include poisoning the water, poisoning the air we breathe, um, trying to get us to eat as much highly processed food that's no good for us uh, and make life quite miserable. And these are the people that we've put in charge to look after us. So this is a bit mad. However, if we look on the lawful side of things, there is a, a better remedy in dealing with these legal uh, um, methods because... Natural law has to be above the legal law, it has to be. You had God, I've spoken about this before and made presentations, of course, but you had God who created man on the earth. God being, I suppose, the granter, if you like. And we're on the earth and here we are having the dominion. He said, here's, here's the earth, you have dominion of the earth and go and look after it, care for it and, and have a jolly old time. And then man has said, well, there's, there's a fair few of us. We need to get um, some organisation doing done here. Perhaps if we can get ourselves with a small group, an assembly of people, perhaps they can help us sort out some of the problems and we'll have some guidance on which if we all adhere to, it will make it an easier place. And so then we ended up setting up, some, well, what with kings and wittons and eventually a parliament here in this country and, and in many others around the world. And this parliament was supposed to be in a, let's call it a democratic society, in which the people's wishes 
would be gathered together, told to a representative, and the representative would go up to the the uh, assembly of people in, let's call it, the House of Commons, and say to them, uh, this is what we want, and uh, we're paying you to go and do it. And the, the House of Commons and the Parliament would go, OK, we'll do that. Well, that didn't last really for very long, if ever at all. It turned out that these people sucked into thought, hang on, we've been given this power, we can operate this land however we like. And slowly but surely, this legislation has been written up and new acts and new ways of dealing things, which are completely unfair and anti-human, have been passed, and here we are where we are. And yet, of course, the natural law is still in operation. We, In other words, we can live in the private, away from what they call the public, the public life being the world of legislation. They call it public because you have to be a member of the public and if you're a member it means you're signed up to something you register to be a member and so if you're a member of the public that is a, a, actually an institution or even a corporation uh, and at first we think oh no that means we're free isn't it being a member of the public but not really not at all it means you are registered within this system and we find that we are registered within a system of all sorts of things if we want to drive a car we have to ha register our car if we want to buy a house we have to register with the land registry if we want to be part of the NHS we have to register and have a, a national insurance number Everything that we do and partake in this legalese, uh, this legislation world is using this legalese and the registration principle and getting us effectively to contract. It's all about contracts in the public. When you're in the private, you're not contracting. You may have make agreements, you may trade with one another, but you're not doing commerce in the same way that you do in the public. Now, I've been working with a, a, a fine gentleman um, who's helped me understand the system and he's, he's proved it, it works for him. But, and I've mentioned some of this in the past, but I haven't gone big on this because I wanted to see what other, let's say, experienced and um, let's just say experts, I don't like that term really, but let's say experts in their field talking about sovereignty talking about um, what is lawful, talking about constitutions and all those sort of things. And I've given the platform, uh, uh, these people a chance on the platform, uh, a way to express themselves. And not one of them really, apart from my friend, um, has come up with what I would say is the, the simplest and easiest solution to deal with these, this contract situation. Some come close, some do stay in the private and say you have to be sovereign and be out of it and others say it's better to work with when you come across things like the unfairness of the council tax or these entrapments with the speed cameras or the parking tickets in which there is no victim uh, so therefore there's no crime it's just a infringement of a contract but the question is did you actually contract with them in the first place is there a, a piece of paper in which there is your signature signed in wet ink? Was there a meeting of the minds? Did you, did both parties come to it and say, yes, I totally agree with this? Um, or has it been foisted upon you? Now, as I say, I've had a number of people come onto the channel and put their points of view across, uh, but none of them, I think, has satisfactorily given me the most simplest of answers but before I could put this on I wanted to get collaboration from other sources rather than just my friend because again it's that's hearsay now you might say what I'm going to present to you is also hearsay but at least it's more hearsay than than others and I have spoken about this before and you may be going come on get on with it though so I want to show you I want to show you um, this that was sent to me not so long ago um, now, this comes, I believe, from 2013. It is in America, uh, but I believe that it still applies to all the English-speaking countries that runs under the same um, system of the private bar guild system of contracts. So this is it says here the judge 
retired judge spills the beans and and I if you read the whole article he says he had to get out because he realized he hadn't realized at first what he was doing but it's all about contracts so I won't bother with um, there's a lot of it that I don't need to read but I want to start here on this paragraph and he says you probably identify with this corporate process as a legal process but it really isn't about what is legal or lawful because all process is is about the enforcement of contracts and this is what he talks about courts or the imposition and enforcement of corporate regulations called statutes the best advice you'll ever receive is to avoid their courts wherever possible and he goes on to explain that actually the court is about getting a contract um, it, it's about jurisdiction it's about having the contract fulfilled it's about getting consent from the individual he understands that there are men and women not persons that persons are a, um, a legal construct that's uh, in Black Law's Dictionary. We know a lot of people are aware that the, the word persons has more meaning than you might think, than perhaps in the Oxford English Dictionary, and that all the language in courts has a completely different meaning. Um, and some people will say none of that makes any difference, and some people will say it makes absolutely the difference, and this judge uh, is of the latter. He also understands that everything is to do with trust law, the highest type of law in the country. Now, I will try and make this available on my website. Um, and if it's not available initially in the description, it will be later on. So you'll have to come back and, and access it because it's a PDF and you can't d download a PDF from YouTube in the description. Or at least I've never found a way of doing that. So I'll have to put it on my website, which I will ask my webmaster to do. So it might take a bit of time if you're watching this as soon as this video goes out. Um, so anyway, it, th there's a whole lot about what this is about, but ultimately it comes down to contract law. And a contract is whether you consent to the contract. All the time, the public officials are trying to get you to consent to them get jurisdiction so that you consent and when you register everything you're effectively giving your permission you're giving away title but because you didn't know that these contracts really and truly in my opinion must be null and void but what we need to do is to correct the situation uh, which which is fine we can do that we can correct our standing we can tell them that th the contract that we thought that we had with them is null and void and this is how it's going to run from here on in. Now you may be still a bit confused about what I'm talking about and I've made presentations about this and this is it it's not so much using the argument of free man on the land I'm a living man and my blood uh, boils and my skin creeps all that sort of stuff although it actually is about that and you'll see what I mean it's just the council tax websites council websites are now saying oh, you can't use that freeman on the land argument um because it that people have tried this and it does get a bit messy the courts are sort of laughing at you and they treat you with disrespect now although you are really using that system but there's a different way of doing it because you just look at the contract what is the contract and who is in charge and really and truly the only person who can be in charge is yourself of your own trust now, I don't want to get into the whole business about the birth certificate and the trust and the bondage and how it's been floated on the stock market. You can go and investigate that. There's plenty of videos about that. But the point is that you, as a living man, have, at some point in your history, you did land up on this parent, on this planet, as a result of the union of a man and a woman. You, uh, you arrived at one particular point in time uh, at one specific place in the world uh, by these two individuals, the union of which, which makes you very, very important, uh, but can identify you as an individual man or woman. And as a result of that, somebody registered that fact had happened, and then your mum and dad, your 
the man and woman, your mother and father, they informed the registrar and it was registered a second time and your surname and your first name were put together um, to become this corporate fiction. Now, I don't want to call it the straw man. I don't like that term. I think it's a strange term. It, I'm going to call it more professionally a corporate fiction because we live in this corporate world and in the world of commerce, it's all about contracts. They can only contract with other entities, legal entities. A man and a woman, a real living and breathing man or woman with blood and flesh and breathing the air that walks about, is not a legal fiction. You're real. But in order for corporations, and we're being run by these corporations, and the government is a corporation, in order for them to deal with us, they have to deal with these these entities, these legal entities. They can only deal with like for like. It's like um, chalk and cheese. You can eat cheese and you can mix cheese, but if you mix cheese and chalk, it doesn't work. Same with oil and water. It, that, that they will always be separate. And that's how a living man or living woman will always be separate from the corporation entities. So your name, which as you know will be in capital letters on your passport, on your driving licence, on your council tax, on your inland revenue returns and all of these things, on all these government authorities, will be in capitals. And that's how you know that they're dealing with a legal fiction, a legal entity that isn't you. It's just not you. And it's all about contracts. Now, I recently purchased this book, which is worth getting if you want to get into this stuff uh, be the one to execute your trust and it talks about this is by David Robinson I'll leave the link in the description it's a fascinating book it is uh, an American book but again as I say it certainly relates to the same stuff because this corporation stuff is worldwide it's global unless you happen to be in some obscure tribe that nobody's ever discovered you'll pretty much be sure that this is a global phenomenon and everything is contract, as that judge said. It's about getting you to acquiesce. If you're in the public, it means that you are a member of the public. A member means that you had to become registered somewhere to be a member. You know what memberships are like? Membership, a member of the public. So that is part of the corporation. If you're a citizen, you are a citizen of a corporation from uh, the Roman, isn't it? It's, it's from the Civitas, I think, or what old cities used to be, a citizen. You don't want to be one of those because then you're subject to corporations. If you agree to all of this, you are an employee, for example, here in the UK of the UK corporation. The UK is a corporation and you don't want to be one of those. You want to be in the private, which means that you're not a member of anything. You are you. You are a unique individual. You are a man or a woman. You may trade, you may work and do stuff, but you're not in the world of commerce and contracts in the world of corporations. So in order to be an individual and to be a man, you have to accept that there is a trust that was set up based on your birth certificate. But because it's made you a unique person, because nobody else was born at that time and nobody else was born of those parents and nobody else was born at that um, particular place, that trust that, it, that has been set up and has put uh, the birth certificate bonded and floated on the stock market and making money and all of that, that trust is, is yours. You're the sole beneficiary. Nobody else could be the sole beneficiary. But they don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that. And because you're the sole beneficiary of that, they are the trustees. Now, the trustee is somebody who is there to administer and make sure the bills are paid, to make sure that everything is done for your benefit. But, but they are not in charge. They need to be instructed. And so you need a third element to the, a trust. It's always three elements, and that it would be the executor. And the executor can be the sole beneficiary, and in this case it is. You are the executor and the sole beneficiary. A trustee can never be the executor because the trustee is told what to do. 
we have public trustees. That's what the government is. Now, if we contract with them and agree to their terms, then they become the executor and we become the trustee and we have to go and file our tax returns and pay all the bills and, and, all, and administer everything and effectively be the slaves, if you like. We don't have to do that, of course. We can correct the standing and let them know that actually we are the executor of the trust and that we are the sole beneficiary and they work for us and we tell them. And I mentioned this in some other presentations I've done that really and truly we just need to go back to the authorities, write them a letter and explain who we are and say, actually, do you know what? We are the, the executor and the sole beneficiary and we recognise that you're the trust. When you go into court, for example, or you get these uh, letters that demand money, they are presuming that you will take the trust D, the trustee position. They're assuming that you're going to do that. They want you to do that because then you are responsible for paying all the bills and all of that. And you just have to rebut this. This is part of the 12 presumptions of law. You rebut it and you say, no, I'm actually, that is not correct. And once you've thrown that back at them, they're in a bit of disarray because they don't want to be the trustee because it means they're responsible. So the chances are these bills would disappear. Anyway, I'll put this link into the book because that explains it a lot more. It talks about the correct way. It says the de facto way and the de jure way of how in a court um, the clerk of the court and the convener, the judge, will swap round the roles. It tells you how you can rebut these parking tickets, these council taxes and, and everything else and how contracts work. Corporations and contracts getting you to contract and get into the jurisdiction. It's absolutely fascinating. This is what my friend Stuart has been banging on into my head about, but I wanted to be, in order to be more open and honest with you, the lovely audience. I wanted to get everybody who had an opinion on how what was lawful and what was legal to go forward with their ideas and listen to them and present them. And it's taken over a year to do that. And now I believe that this is the only way, the only way to get out of the contracts is to correct our standing, tell them who we are and live in the private. I'll leave the links in the description. I'll be doing more about this on how we do all this in future videos. But thank you for watching this somewhat long-winded um, monologue, and I appreciate you coming along. Now, I still have more people coming on the channel um, who may well be talking about the, the legal system, and they may believe that's how it's done, and they may poo-poo all of this. They're entitled, of course, to their own opinions. Um, and again, I'll, I'll present them and I'll enthuse with them to get them to tell us their system. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm agreeing with any of them. But anyway, in the meantime, thank you for watching.